Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Kai Yi. Tai Xian is my teammate, and both of us are PhD students in Columbia University, supervised by Professor Anastasiu. Uh, our team name, uh, GISO, comes from the name of our lab. Uh, GISO stands for Genomic Information Systems Laboratory. It's a great chance for me to present our work to all of you today. As Paul just mentioned, uh, tumors are not uniform, but are consist of different uh, types of cells, ranging from the normal tissue microenvironment, uh, in infiltrating immune cells, and the cancer cells. In terms of the cancer cells, they are also very, very heterogeneous uh, and involved to be admixtures of multiple subpopulations of cells, uh, also called subclones, driven by distinct sets of uh, somatic, uh, driven by distinct sets of genomic variants. Studies have, sh have shown that distinct properties of these subclones underlie the difference of cl clinical outcomes. For example, some cells will grow faster and metastasize more frequently than others. Therefore, understanding tumor heterogeneity is very critical for us to develop more effective and long-term cancer treatments. So the goal of the SMC heterogeneity challenge is to identify the best algorithms that can reconstruct the genotypes of subclones and their evolutionary relationships. To solve the challenge questions, our team developed a cascade ensemble model. This model consists of four connected modules and features an extensive use of genomic attributes that enables us to take into account the negative effects on subclonal reconstruction caused by copy number variations, as well as the false positive mutation callings. As for the first two sub-challenge, we employed a modified truncated delicate process mixture model to decompose the tumor subclonality. And for the third sub-challenge, we developed a heuristic tree building method to predict the subclonal phylogeny. It is the flow chart of our cascade ensemble model. As you can see, there are three colors of these building blocks. The green ones represent the input and output. The input data sets given in the challenge include the somatic mutation callings generated by the algorithm mutect and the copy number variation calling generated by the algorithm Battenberg. And the output answers the questions in three sub-challenges. The, uh, the three blue blocks represent the functional processes that are designed to incorporate variant, uh, different kinds of genomic information. And the remaining four orange blocks denote the four mo modules, as I just mentioned. Next, I will show you how this components work closely and coordinately in details. The first module was designed to get an initial estimate for tumor cellularity. Mm. From experiment, we found having a not bad estimate at the beginning is very, uh, can greatly improve the decomposition accuracy afterwards. However, we are not allowed to use the Battenberg cellularity directly for the sub-challenge one. So we decided to use uh, the face the genotype information based on the definition of B allele frequency. All the values here coming from the input Battenberg files. Uh, in practice, you can simply skip this step as long as you have a fair an initial estimate in hand before doing the following steps. Module two and module three are key steps for subclonal reconstruction in our model. They are based on a modified truncated delicate process mixture model. Delicate process is a cornerstone in Bayesian nonparametric statistics. 
uh, as we know, many classic mixture models usually need to assume a fixed number of subpopulations, in which way the test data sets will, uh, must be uh, clustered into those subpopulations that are also associated with the training data sets. However, the delicate process has the beauty that it doesn't make such uh, assumptions, but provides an alternative, uh, alternative by automatically selecting a proper number for the model. Also, it has become computationally feasible by the development of Markov chain Monte Carlo methods. Because of these properties, it has become so popular that most, uh, that many recently published papers uh, about subclonal reconstruction are also based on this model. Similar to these methods, our model also cluster somatic mutations using their variant allele frequency. However, what we actually used is a truncated version uh, implemented by the blocked gap sampler. The main, sorry, the main reason for, uh, the main difference between truncated version and a standard version is the dimensionality of the priors, which is infinite in the standard version however, becomes finite in the truncated one. Uh, this truncated version was proposed in 2001 with the purpose of, to, uh, of avoiding some limitations of the standard model. For example, it can, works, it can work without requiring an explicit prediction rule, so it can speed up the mixing Markov chain. Also, it can resolve the <laughs> incompatibility problems of the standard, problem, uh, standard model with the non-conjugate cases. Further, we modify the truncated version in, from three aspects. First of all, we incorporate the information of copy number variations to make correction for our prediction. Also, we figured out a way to identify the false positive caused by mutation calling methods in order to minimize its negative effects on reconstruction. And thirdly, we proposed an ensemble design which can substantially increase the accuracy and efficiency for the whole process. Let's first talk about the effects of copy number variation. If a somatic mutation lies in a region that is also affected by a copy number variation, the phylogenetic re relationship between these two kinds of variants can make the story more complicated. Specifically, whether a copy number variation occurs before or after the somatic mutation can lead to different expected variant allele frequency. To deal with this ambiguity, we came up with an idea that we can first apply the algorithm only on a selected group of somatic mutation for which the total copy number is exactly equal to one. The reason uh, for this selection is that um, the mutation, this mutation loci are either all variant alleles or all reference alleles, which means their variant allele frequency is deterministic, equal to zero or one. So no other extra arbitrary assumptions are needed. In addition to the selected number of somatic mutation and the related copy number of variations, the initial estimate for cellularity coming from module one is also the input for module two. Then module two will apply the decomposition algorithm using all of this data to output a decomposition result. As you can see, we put a decision block between module two and module three by testing whether K2, the, the number of subclones estimated by module two, whether it is equal to one. 
If it is true, we will claim that there is only one subclone in this sample. And then all the other questions in this challenge can also be answered. This design feature can save us a lot of time, computational time, especially for the cases where the sample has only one subclone but has an overwhelming number of somatic mutations to analyze. Otherwise, we will continue with module three by running the decomposition algorithm again, but use the value of K2 to, up, to update the parameter used in module three. Unlike what we did in module two, we will use all of the somatic mutations for decomposition. However, we will, uh, these mutations should first go through a filter that was designed to detect the false positive mutation callings. As we can see from the two histograms showing the mutation frequency of different uh, subclones for two training data sets, there is a considerable proportion of false positives which can de distort the entire distribution and then compromise the accuracy of decomposition. Through, through the inspection of the characteristic of false positives, we define three conditions for a qualified somatic mutation. First of all, we require the average base quality for reads supporting alleles to be neither very high nor, neither ver uh, nor very low because we found the percentage of false positive in these two limits is uh, much higher than that in other regions. Also, we will exclude somatic mutations that are also present in the single nucleotide polymorphism database. In the third place, we require the matched genome of a qualified mutation locus is variant free. Uh, in other words, the variant allele frequency is equal to zero. All the values used here coming from the input mutect files. And the table shows the performance of the filter. The three columns represent the number of choose false positive, the number of filtered false positives, as well as the number of total somatic mutations. Now we have, uh, have output the results for the first, first two sub-challenges. In the module four, also the last module was designed to answer the questions in sub-challenge three to reconstruct the phylogenetic tree among these subclones. We developed a heuristic tree building, tree building method under three assumptions. The first one is also the most common and powerful one called infinite size assumptions. It assumes that each somatic mutation occurs only once in the evolutionary history. It means mm, each subclone will have the mut somatic mutations that its ancestors also had. Also, the subclonal lineage corresponds to the subtree in the phylogeny. The second one is a parsimony assumption that Many of the subclones are vestigial. For implementation, we are minimizing the proportion difference between each subclone and their children. And the last one, we assume that each subclone has at most two children. Here is a very simple example for the tree building process. Given that we have got the decomposition results from previous steps, where the number in each circle represents the cellular proportion of each subclone. The first step we should do is to rank them in terms of their proportion. Then we will assign them uh, in a decreasing order to the phylogenetic tree. So firstly, we will assign the one with largest uh, proportion as a root and the second largest one to be its first child. As for the third one, we check if its proportion exceeds the difference between that of the first two subclones. 
No, it isn't. So we can safely assign it to be is the second child as the root, uh, of the root. For the last one, since based on our assumption, the number of the root's children has reached the maximum. So we can only assign the last one to subclone two or subclone three. Uh, by the parsimony, parsimony assumption, we will assign it to subclonal three because of a smaller difference between these two subclones. Well, as you can see, it's very straightforward, but it proves to be very effective on all the training data sets. Okay, I have completed my introduction of our model, and uh, this table shows the median score across all training data sets for each sub-challenges. Sub as you can see, our model outperformed the example model in all sub-challenges and did nearly per perfect job in sub-challenge one and three. Okay, in summary, we proposed a cascade ensemble model to answer the questions ab about tumor heterogeneity. And uh, during the reconstruction process, we incorporate various kinds of genomic information to take into account the negative effects caused by copy number variations and the false positive mutation callings. Also, we developed a heuristic tree building method to reconstruct the phylogeny relationship among subclones. Results suggest that our model does improve the accuracy and efficiency for tumor subclonal reconstruction. Thank you. Interest. So, uh, in, in your presentation, you mentioned that how you model the uh, allelic frequency and noise model. So, uh, what do you use exactly for uh, the fluctuation from the uh, uh, subclonal uh, prevalences? Uh, sorry, you mean the so, noise? So, you, you know that, uh, we know that uh, allelic frequency might uh, fluctuate from the uh, expected uh, prevalences, value, yeah. right? And so, what model do you use to uh, model that part for the Richter process you're using? Uh, like there's a base distribution, right? Oh, yes, we use the binomial. Okay, Yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm.